In Colombia, one of the world's most powerful and violent drug traffickers has spent his first full day in jail, and a very comfortable jail. It might be good for Colombia, but many U.S. officials are not pleased. Here's ABC's Mark Potter. After months of negotiations, Pablo Escobar was flown by government helicopter to a comfortable jail in his hometown, where some American authorities worry he could still run his business. Current and former U.S. law enforcement officials fear the Colombian government has given in to the traffickers. It is discouraging because I really believed over the last seven, eight years the traffickers were really on the run, and I don't believe it was necessary to make a deal like this for him. Colombia's National Assembly has now banned extradition, meaning Escobar no longer faces trial in the U.S., where he could receive a life sentence. The Colombian government has also promised reduced sentences, perhaps only a few years, to Escobar and other traffickers who surrender. Police say traffickers who do turn themselves in could easily be replaced by others who continue to ship cocaine. The strategy for the government should have been just straight ahead, extradite them, incarcerate them, and no deals. But Colombian authorities say the surrender plan will reduce the drug war violence that has killed thousands of Colombians. Most of that violence has been blamed on the Medellin cartel, headed by Pablo Escobar. Mark Potter, ABC News. Good evening. It's become a typical day in Colombia. Three more judges have quit their jobs after being threatened by the murderous drug cartels. The government has imposed a curfew in nine cities in the heart of cocaine country, including the cartel's capital, Medellin. Today, the government intercepted an arms shipment destined for the cartel's gunman, Still, the mayor of Medellin says he needs 3,000 more national policemen to support the 4,000 he already has. For too many Colombians, too much like just another day. ABC's Peter Collins is in Medellin. Today in Medellin, military police were patrolling the streets looking for bombers. Last night, terrorists said to be working for the Medellin cartel were trying to put in place these rockets for an attack on a government-owned distillery when the attempt was broken up by security guards. Thirteen bombs have gone off in Medellin since the weekend, all aimed at government-owned banks or state liquor stores. The city's mayor, who favors talks with the drug traffickers, today signed an order imposing a 10 p.m. to dawn curfew in the city. Don Fabio Ochoa is the father of three sons, all wanted for extradition by the U.S. In an interview with ABC News, he said that although his sons had done great damage to the United States and deserved to be punished, they would prefer a grave in Colombia to a jail in the United States. We too have a court system. Let us punish our sons in our own country. Ochoa said American aid to the Colombian government is a great cruelty because it will mean more bloodshed, more war. The elder Ochoa, who is believed to stay completely out of the drug trafficking business, said he believes his three sons are still in hiding in Colombia. And he said he would personally broker a deal in which the cartel leaders would vow to give up their cocaine business if allowed to live freely in Colombia and enjoy their wealth. It would give me the greatest pleasure if I could do that for my country. The drug money brought wealth to some here in Medellin and added to its growing skyline. But now that this city is terrorized by violence, its people are divided about how to restore peace. Many here say the government should not give in to the cartel, but should at least talk to its leaders. The immediate solution is dialogue, dialogue with everyone. We are living in a situation now when one doesn't know when the bomb is going to be for you. One of the reasons why people here have mixed feelings about the cartel is because some benefit from drug money. This housing project for the poor in Medellin was built by Pablo Escobar, one of the drug kingpins. Peter Collins, ABC News, Medellin, Colombia. Good evening. Once again, the day's news is dominated by the struggle to win a war against the drug cartels in Colombia and to shape a presidential drug policy which will prove effective for the United States. President Bush has spent the day in Maine working on the overall concept to fight illegal drugs, which he'll present to the nation next Tuesday. In Colombia, further response from the drug cartels to the government's crackdown there. On the one hand, more violence. On the other, a suggestion of negotiations. ABC's Mark Potter is there. Fabio Ochoa is the patriarch of a family infamous for its control over cocaine trafficking in Colombia. Three of his sons, including drug boss Jorge Luis Ochoa, are wanted by the U.S. for extradition on major smuggling charges. 
In an open letter to Colombian President Virgilio Barco, the senior Ochoa said the traffickers are willing to talk peace. According to Ochoa, the traffickers would quit dealing drugs if the government grants them a pardon. Hay que dialogar. Also calling for peace talks with the traffickers is Juan Gomez Martinez, the mayor of Medellin, who says negotiations could help end the drug violence. Overnight, six state liquor stores blew up in Medellin, which is home to Colombia's most powerful trafficking organization, of which the Ochoas are a part. U.S. drug agents believe Ochoa's letter is proof the Colombian drug crackdown is hurting the traffickers. There has been no response to the letter from President Barco, but he is widely known to oppose any negotiations with the violent drug barons. Liberal presidential candidate Ernesto Samper says if the government's crackdown fails to stop trafficking in a few months, the idea of negotiation should be put to a vote. If the Colombian people want to, wants to, to negotiate, they must say that in a referendum. In Bogota this morning, a bomb tore apart a travel agency. This is the first time the capital city has been hit since the drug sweeps began a week and a half ago. Meanwhile, authorities are still working on the paperwork for the extradition of accused money launderer Eduardo Martinez to the United States. Drug agents say the Colombian crackdown will face its toughest test if and when Martinez is extradited. The drug bosses have promised to kill 10 judges for every trafficker sent to the United States. Mark Potter, ABC News, Bogota, Colombia. In Washington today, the Colombian justice minister rejected the idea of negotiating with the drug cartels. Monica de Great has been seeking more American assistance for her country's battle with the drug lords. She met with reporters at the Colombian embassy in Washington. Here's ABC's John McCarthy. Security was extremely tight as reporters filed in to hear Colombia's 32-year-old minister of justice tell her story. The law is under siege in Colombia and we must protect it in every way we can. Fifty judges have been assassinated in Colombia in the last decade. The U.S. had earmarked five million dollars to help protect judges and magistrates, but de Grafe is asking for four times that amount. She wants 19 million dollars to help buy hundreds of bulletproof cars, metal detectors for courtrooms, and thousands of bulletproof vests. To the best of our ability, we will try to accommodate the request. We uh, are, are very firmly committed to supporting the Colombians in their effort. Despite death threats believed to be from the drug cartels, de Grave today said she will not quit and will not run. I am determined that the integrity of our justice system survives this crisis, and I hope to play my full part in ensuring this. But what about the safety of her husband and child who have also been threatened? My son is three years old, and I think he doesn't understand all the problems involved, but I hope he's safe and we all are safe. It is the certain knowledge that no one is really safe in Colombia from drug cartel assassins that is driving the U.S. to do far more for that country than anyone anticipated just two weeks ago. John McQuethy, ABC News, the State Department.